All right, I'll call the meeting to order. The only comments that I have, um, I made a little earlier with a few that were in attendance. I've sent a number of our projects to Doug Parks. And unfortunately, as we all know, we're in an election year and we've lost him as our liaison. I don't know until after the election who's going to be our liaison. Mm -hmm. So all of these projects may get kicked down the road a little bit. Um, I'm looking at one of the things I want to share with everybody, and Pat, you'll be interested in this. Um, the tributary um, estimate came in yesterday uh, for the habitat um, changes that we're trying to make over at the uh, uh, South Pond. And I know, Pat, you were going to try to get in touch with ACT, but hadn't been able to do so. That's you correct, Karen. I have a feeling folks are on vacation, so I'm going to touch base and try again next week. OK, all right. As soon as you hear anything back, uh, let me know. I did talk to uh, Burr Monroe yesterday in the morning, and we had a nice chat about he came in in June and, and spoke with everyone about right. the habitat modification. And I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here on our agenda. But uh, the tributary came in with, I thought, a reasonable estimate that I shared with Doug, and I'm hoping that he shares with John Viola. And again, we don't know um, where that's going, but it was around the whole South Pond, and he, he put, I think it was 137,000 square feet, but starting small, he was even interested in the erosion program um, that we've got uh, in our unfinished business where we're waiting for Maryland Coastal Bays. I know they're supposed to possibly give us a grant. So tributary estimate, I'm going to wait on the tree planting program. He has that as well. The monofilament containers. I've sent to him and uh, Pat. Patty couldn't be here today because she's, I think she's on vacation this week, as well as the Route 90 Pond Trail, uh, pond trail improvements. Um, I've submitted those two different ways. I went through uh, info at oceanpines.org. They came back and said to go through our liaison, which I did. Um, I have not heard back. And uh, so we're kind of in a, a holding pattern for those projects. Um, for the agenda, do we have a motion to approve the agenda today? So moved. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Do we have a second? Tim, Karen. Okay. And then the minutes. Uh, I apologize for the mix up on the minutes. Uh, I saved that file and named it 2022. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I sent it out, somehow I had 2023 because we're having computer and printer problems. Yeah. So now I can't print at all. So when my husband gets in tonight, he's going to have to fix that. But uh, finally, I got the minutes right there. Well, you when you're using liking. using something as a template, because I've done that before, and you just sort of try, try to go the old event to happen. It always, I wrong always version take the gets saved. One. <laughs> and then I miss, yeah. I miss yeah, no, no, so I was reading, I'm saying, wait a minute. Beta. That was a name. Thank you so much <laughs> for catching that. You actually read the minutes. I'm yeah, impressed. I do. So on the minutes for today, do we have a motion to approve? Tim? Okay. In a second. Karen, thank you. Okay. And um, John, would you like to make any comments? Oh, I'm good. I'm just no public comments. Okay. Thank oh, Pat Benner, you missed. Uh, we have John Latham here as a guest today. He's running for our board. And as we just found out, uh, when the third person that comes in on the vote will fill Frank Daly's position and fulfill his commitment time wise. And I think that's another year. So that won't be three years. I didn't know that till today. And Thank just, you, Sharon. So, you know, just to fill you in on that. Um, this is going to be a short meeting, I think. So, on buffer, we're still waiting for Maryland Coastal Bays. Uh, Route 90 Pond, I needed 
the board and OP management to chime in. I gave them your list. Yeah, and I and I think you know, as I recall, what Doug Park said in his what I think was his closing remarks to us is work with the other committees, and that's the one where we really need to work with Park and Rec. Because I did. I, their trail I is there. That to, Maybe yeah. they're not interested. That was interesting. I uh, I sent my email twice. I did not hear back, so I actually picked up the phone and called Bill Bernard, mm -hmm. spoke with him. He said it looks good to him. Proceed. Okay. So I did. I, with his permission, I went through info. Uh, Ocean Pines and I went through Doug. Um, so they're on board with what we're trying to do, but we just haven't done anything yet. But we have the list. Doug has the list. Info by Ocean Pines has the list. Yes. So I'm assuming that would be John Viola. He's done a real good job. And if they don't get over there and take one of those trees down, it's going to hurt. I yeah. hope it doesn't hurt somebody. Yeah, I hope it just falls. As safety it. issues are the the most that's the concern. biggest issue yeah. that we've got right, right now. They got to make that trail safe. Tree removal, Tim. Um, well, what would you? Where do you want me to begin? <laughs> well, well, I will let you know what I did. I took your response yeah. on the planting, and um, I made a note of it here. If anybody wants to, to see that, so I made it a nice one page, easy yeah, to read, nice one page, safe and. Um, uh, well, this is, let me. Well, why are we here with that? So we've made a few attempts in the last few months for Ocean Pines to address what we've seen as flagrant tree cutting in yeah. different scenarios you know, on, on residential lots. So I see that White Horse Park is is suffering from tree cutting. Um, there, they have met many. Uh, I can't remember, about thirty trees uh, because they're they're dying off. And but there's no effort with uh, replacing the trees. So I just a, a very basic issue, a very obvious issue, uh, a fair issue. I made a statement to that to, for you to submit through uh, uh, you know, the process to get a Ocean Pines to respond to that. And in that, I also uh, quoted two objectives within the ARC guidelines about preserving the natural beauty of ocean pines and to um but here's the thing i'm quoting to prevent indiscriminate clearing of property removal of trees the primary objective of landscaping is to preserve the natural beauty of ocean pines and that's what we've been talking about so that's that particular act that's one i shared with uh doug and uh, but um tim isn't there like that conflict between if the county approves something that overrides what ocean pine says is it, have um, we run into that with people getting permission to clear cut it's like, only when they're building that way isn't it within 200 like that new that new development where they just clear cut the entire forest what's it called triple crown well it's interesting you say that tim because my neighbors had it cut we're on the water and every tree on that lot was removed in right. order for them to build that house on the water. We had well, a neighbor too. And, well, to, just to clarify, to build the house and also create the views mm -hmm. that they want. That's what they're doing. They because all the trees. it's obvious they, they cut a whole section of wood so they can have a view down the canal. Okay. And isn't that, isn't there like a county law that if it's within what, 30 feet of the water or something? What, 200 feet. So anything with 200, 200 feet is more regulated. Yeah. Now, I don't know when you want to mention uh, Ken Wilson. Well, we can mention him now whenever you're ready because Did I he? wanted to have that. Did he used to be on in this? He in was that? our chair before I took over. And when he resigned and retired, he nominated me and then everyone voted. Um, Ken is highly involved in the tree issue. He's been sending me a number of emails. He's also been sending me pictures because he's in the same boat I'm in where he's on the water and someone cut every tree down in order to build a house on the corner lot there. And he, he did share pictures with us. I think I sent those to you several months ago. What we've been told, John, is we couldn't invite the builder here in one of our meetings to discuss trades because we were overstepping our authority. Uh, we're advisory in nature, and so we can do nothing without you guys helping us. 
And that's why we're hoping that our liaison has passed on some of our recommendations with um, waiting. I've been sitting in some of the uh, some of the art meetings and a lot of these same discussions are happening about trees. Oh, they are talking about trees. Oh, good. Okay, we're going to give them as our experts. So well, I guess these are folks that are coming to ask for some variants of, of mm -hmm. some sort in some cases. Uh -huh. So I've been sitting here watching some of them, sometimes that application process where someone doesn't agree as you know, agrees, if you will, right. we'll bring to that committee. So I've been listening to quite a few of them. Hmm. But if you treat conversation for a while, well, we've been talking about trees for several months well, now. Okay, so we're off just to, yeah. we're off uh, Robert's rule or whatever. Yeah, that's we, not, yeah I've suspended uh, those. So, so you can give us a check. Can I, so, is it so basically it's homeowners or builders or whoever say we need we want a variance from the guidelines for tree cutting and. And how, so my question, is, what is the response from our, because they basically say, okay, that's where, where we'll give you that variance. Is that generally what is happening? Yeah, because those variants could be, you know, tree or if it's a violation, someone took a tree out mm -hmm. without a permit and they're being called. A, that's a uh, lot going back on. Yeah, there, it, yeah so. you hear on Sundays, you hear the tree being cut down yeah. on Sundays, and you know that's not tree cut from. Company. Yeah, but I mean, are they basically so is the response because that would be a follow up. I think what we would want to do is coordinate with the ARC because they deal with the permits. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is what has been their um, position with these things? Has it been, you know, go ahead and it's or if they have a if they got a violation, it's like, were they forgiven? Um, or you know what is I've seen this couple of I've seen they that were in violation didn't replace whatever they were supposed to replace it with right making sure that folks are following up on that yeah, and our seen, neighbors didn't either they yeah. were supposed to replace a number that, of that's the, the, the ones that I've recently heard you need in to replace meeting. it or you need to go back and apply for a permit mm. who's the contractor you let the contractor know but I guess the contract is in the community. You should know. They know. Yeah. So there's been conversations all kind of all over the on that. That just seems like a common theme. Yeah, it is a common theme in our community. Well, because it's, I, in my opinion, at least over the last ten years, it's it's completely changed the policy of tree cutting. From if you look at the guidelines, they're I, you know, from what I just quoted, if you look at the, the tree permit itself, it talks about repercussions if you, uh, you know, violate the permit process and very severe things, you know, about cutting off amenities or whatever. And so th that kind of control seems to be lost. And, yeah, and, that, and, and so you got people basically taking advantage of that, builders and homeowners taking a, a, advantage of that current situation and that's what we're concerned with because ultimately we're losing uh i think the legacy and the vision of what ocean pines uh, when it was created obviously the people that created the ocean pines and the guidelines whatever had a lot of vision of what ocean pines was going to be about and that included controlling all this tree cutting and and we seem to have lost that mm -hmm. and i think that's very sad what they didn't pro perhaps envision is that, especially with the pine trees, they have a lifespan. Right. And this community is more than 50 years old. Like I know the trees, I had one cut down to it's diseased. Right. And you're going to you're going to find a lot of that. Right. Uh, yeah. We're, so, we're again, we're, replacing it. I agree. We're we're at Ocean Pines at a certain age now where clearly there's I mean, if you, if we're over here in the park. The ones that are marked are pretty much uh, they're pretty much dead. damaged or dead or whatever, and that's something that uh, you know we realize there's a lot of tree cutting, but we we still need to preserve that legacy with replacing the trees. But you, can, you know, replacing a mature tree with a mature tree is really really expensive. I think uh, well, you have to have, I know that. You have to have saplings. In, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and that's what I said in my statement. Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, At least make an effort to. to it's going to take years for it to get to the size. Yeah, are. absolutely. But 
there, uh, do you see attempts to, to replant well, trees other than the fancy cherry trees around the pond? that are half dead yeah uh that was that was a, again is there anybody i don't know who makes the decisions on what types of trees and things to to plant but i don't know that there's a certified arborist on the yeah, yeah, I think there used to be public works. Yeah, right. We no longer have one that I'm part of John Viola's office designs. Yeah. I mean, I'm not arguing that we need to get back to a perfect world here, but the problem is there's no effort and there's just a, a complete lack of control of this, and it's only going to yeah. get worse. And then the builders have the expectation every time they build it on okay, a yes. lot, yeah. their expectation is they're going to clear yeah. back to almost to the property boundary. And then if you started to implement, re-implement this, imagine what their reaction is going to be. They're gonna they're gonna protest or they're gonna go to the art committee, have a grievance and all this other stuff because we've lost that control. And that's I mean, do you agree? Uh, I, I agree that we should try to replace trees. You know, yeah. the, the environmental impact of losing trees and you create heat yeah. islands where there's a lot of pavement, and the more trees you have, the lesser that becomes an issue and you know pavement just radiates heat so. right um but i mean do you agree that uh yeah we need to start a program of replacing trees do you also agree that we've lost control of control I, I haven't been involved in it that long but you know i've seen people cut trees down w without permit yes I've seen that in my own neighborhood and there was also a gentleman i want to uh cpi i mean his name is josh josh but he sits in on those meetings. He's kind of the keeper of permits for violations. You can look if that's Josh Davis. I think so. I think that might be so Josh Davis. The communication. No, no, Josh is a uh, communications. This is another. Another Josh. Another. I think his name is Josh. Okay. I think he, he and, and one other individual that I had not that haven't met might work for Linda Martin, and but they're right. He he seemed to be the keeper of right permits status violation right next step you need to plan you don't need to plan mm -hmm. that's too high uh, you know whatever it is okay they, they, so maybe there's a connection between that, that i mean it, you know and in the statements if indeed they are requiring replanning now or they are implementing some kind of control super but the problem is they haven't said anything to us you know what they've said in our responses is mm -hmm. well the county if the county uh, okay's it, then the county we're done. Lose it, we're, yeah, that's it. We're done. And and that's an I again a misinterpretation of what Ken Wolf said of the critical areas law. It's the county, and I talked to the people at the county within their public works that deals with uh, natural resource, and they specifically said we regulate up to two hundred feet because of the critical area laws in the state of Maryland, and uh, where. They have to get permitted to cut those trees and, and to, to replace them. Any any lot outside of that 200 feet, that does not apply to counties. So if a builder um, builds a house, you know, a half a mile away from the from a water line, um, the county yeah permits the building, but they don't care about the tree because it's not within 200 feet. And I think people within the Ocean Pines uh, Department are saying, well, the county. Okay, the permit. Well, well, then that means so it's done. Yeah. And, but it has nothing to do with tree cutting, you know, regulations. It's the building permit, and and I think they're using that as an excuse to just let the builder do what he wants. Um, One of the thing too is people forget, um, Ocean Ponds was built on a swamp, and we need those trees to yeah. absorb the water. Yeah. When it rains real bad and we get a northeaster. Right. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we live on the north side on, on the water, but isn't there a lot of flooding that goes on on the south side around the golf course? Uh, yeah. I mean, and, uh, you yeah, know, I if these people take all these back. trades down, that's where the flooding comes in. There's nothing yeah, it's, there. It's going to make it worse to absorb the water when it rains like that, you know? I mean, and that's the, one of the reasons a tree yeah. shouldn't all be taken down. There, it's just pure logic. I mean, if you, you know, damage your environment, you're gonna suffer from it. Right. 
So, and that's, so it's not, I don't, so there, there's actually a financial incentive to, to keep them, to keep them, uh, preserve it. Now, again, you have to understand, yes, trees are dying and, and they're, they're over a hundred years old and we got to cut them down. Fine. But there's another part of this and that is to preserve that um, tree canopy somehow and not right. just, and not to cut healthy trees. Right. And, and I mean, the, and the runoff from the golf courts onto people's property. I mean, I've heard them complain about it when, yeah. when um, we get flooding, when we get a northeast. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten in the last two weeks on ghost forests from the rain mm -hmm. and the salt water rising and killing trees along our coast and close yeah. into ocean pines. So I've also referred some of those to Doug as well. I mean, I'm not expecting any kind of uh, perfect response. I just, my expectation is low on how Ocean Pines is going to deal with this problem. <laughs> but misinterpreting the county permits for homes outside of that 200 feet. Um, and, and then apparently, I mean, I've seen houses with healthy trees standing on them where they asked, for almost all of them cut down and it happened. Do you think there's any value then in going forward with some of Ken's suggestions and following up with ACT at all? Assateague Coastal Trust. Yeah, well, I mean, I, don't, I guess my, can they, do you think they can help us with uh, that? Yes, I mean, I think there needs to be an organized effort, not just us, but an organized effort to, uh, to build an argument to support this problem. You should probably get the coastal days people to weigh in. Now. Yeah. I'm sure they would have something to say, especially about the coast. I mean, John, how, how do you feel about this? Do you think we're, it's the way things now are okay, acceptable, or do you think we need to do something? Well, I think that cutting trees down in a place like this is has an environmental impact. Right. And I think people have to understand the reason behind why you shouldn't cut the trees down in these areas, uh, right. and I, I'm not sure everybody has that understood. No, not at all. I do know that the that the companies that cut the trees down, the ones I've talked to, are very uh, aware of that issue, right? And are you know, wait a minute, you know, we're going to have to get a permit. We're going right. to evaluate this. They seem to be pretty responsible, right? Which implies to me that that the, that people that are cutting it down aren't either one of those, and it's either because they just don't know or they don't care. And so the ones that don't know, I, I think we they have to be edu educated. No, we need to raise and then awareness. you'll get enough people so that the ones that don't care will be have to be uh, more. More well, I mean, when when you say don't care, are they? Are you, you think they're doing it without permits? Or yeah, they think they're carrying this things Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, well, I that, as well, because, I've seen that. as I said, most of the because I uh, when I first moved into the house here, um, and I was thinking there was a tree that was leaning in the front of my house that I had to get rid of because it was going to damage oh, the house right. and I tried to get somebody to do it because I didn't want to take a chance of not yeah, doing it correctly yeah. and I uh, got a hold of several tree people and they all said the same thing that have to get a permit uh, right that's I mean, what we were and, told and as that, well and, yeah. and you know and that to me is then it explained to me what was going on I said okay fine and so now right. you know anytime anybody in the neighborhood where uh, is thinking about cutting the tree down um, I always give them my two cents and tell them, you know, you have to get a permit. You have to be careful. What? I said, yes. I said, this is really important. And, uh, you know, but uh, now, I mean, right. is that going to solve the problem? No. But is it going to help solve the problem? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But a lot of people do a lot of things that they shouldn't be doing. It's like when we, bought, when we wouldn't get a shed built, um, we had jumped through hoops for yeah. that. Yeah, and right. we had to put the shed nowhere near where we wanted to put it. But yet there's a shed up the street 
There's no way that shit is legal. Yet, they got, how did they get it approved? Well, maybe they didn't, but that there's one thing. Is there a way? To anonymously report some of these things so you don't like end up in a it, it makes war with me, a neighbor because it makes, an it makes me so mad where it is because there's no way that judge could be built there. I know about the property lines and everything. I mean, we had to have the surveyor come in and and everything and get the property surveyed and then. He had to come out after it was done and everything and get it approved. And there's not enough room for this. I mean, let me, let me get back to trees right now. I'm not so concerned about the shed. I'm sorry to interrupt, but what do you think the first steps will be on um, raising the level of awareness on our tree issue? Should we take it to the board first or should make it go to act first and name the board? In my, in my opinion, we, we did try to go to the board. And uh, and then I think what happened, I, I, maybe you could confirm this, they just simply passed it on to Viola or Viola okay. or, and whatever. And they basically said, oh, it's OK, the county permits it, but we're, everything's fine. Don't, uh, we'll, we'll look at the permit issue, as I remember a quote. Right. Uh, but, you know, nothing, no problem. Everything's OK. So that did not work because I, I don't think that has changed anything uh, as far as I can tell. Um, Didn't somebody report that? Um since they initiated the additional fee to get a permit, that there hasn't 15 Karen brought that. Right. Yeah, that I mean, there hasn't been any people are still getting the permits. Yeah. 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 But so the question is like people who you know don't have permits, you're supposed to display them in the window of your house when you're I've never seen anybody display anything. We actually did. Yeah, I did. And, <laughs> and we got the permit. I put I mean, I green, did. I think. I'm a rule Yeah, I, I follow the rules as well. Yeah, but so again, you, the, if you see an issue, how do you report it? That's that's my question without having your name attached to a complaint, which could end up back. You know, because even if we send something to info or ocean plan, it gets an email attached exactly. to that. So, you know, your email, Tim John. You know, I've been called out on it before when I didn't put a name on it. The anonymous, they anonymous got answers on court of violation should be uh, yeah should should be uh, available somehow if it's a tip line. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, I, I mean that's a good idea, but uh, they'll have to create something, and and to get something created in Ocean Finds that uh, next day, uh, and, and John, if you get a record, good luck. Other than stopping you in the office. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, I saw it in a, a, during one of the storms, I guess, a year or two ago, a tree fell on a neighbor's garage across the street from me. They weren't there. They're part time. And I didn't know, you know, oh, look, there's a tree on their garage. I called and left a message on <clears throat> the main number. I never heard from anybody. No one ever called me back. Uh, just to report, you know, because you didn't know whether it was going to cause further. Well, damage. maybe, maybe that's it. We, we make a phone call. Because you don't have to leave a name. You can just give, I, I noticed this something, this right. problem at this address, or I, I noticed a whole bunch of trees getting cut down or whatever the complaint is, and you don't have to leave a name. You just, you know. Except that most people have, most phones now will tell you what number called. Well, so it's not really anonymous. Well, and like when my name will pop up, <laughs> you wouldn't make the prank call when you were kids. Yeah, like, <laughs> we, we can't, we can't get away with that anymore. anymore. Well, <clears throat> can't prank anybody. But uh, I mean, I, that's a whole new thing for them to set that up in the administration, I think. And that's, I mean, maybe we can mention that when the new board gets online, we can mention that. Uh, well, we once we get a new here. liaison, that would be maybe yeah. one of the first things we bring up. Yeah. But, I mean, that could be very a political issue because they'll, people could think, oh, geez, you know, we want, we don't want all this anonymous complaints coming, you know, whatever. The hell yeah, sometimes we have to tread lightly, John, because we don't want to. If we if we get them upset with us, then they stop listening to us, and we don't want that to happen. Yeah. Well, so in the meantime, I think we need. Yes, we need to organize with ACT and uh, Coastal Interface. Um, if we, uh, the other thing is, I, I think. I mean, I've. Uh, I was with the. The golf men's group had a barbecue, and I was talking to some people. And one of their concerns is, is so many people are apathetic. 
So if we can somehow deathize <laughs> that, <will> never happen. <laughs> that you know people will if you put more pressure on ocean pines they'll respond to it because obviously they don't like pressure and when there is enough pressure i think they will react to that and then do something <clears throat> but um and so in a way to put more pressure on i think is to uh maybe you know cooperate with these other well agencies and see if we can get help now we have the respect of act and in maryland coastal bays um as far as the board is concerned they will listen to them so if we can get buy-in mm -hmm. from them to help us in this cause of our trees um i think that that would maybe be one of the first steps act in maryland coastal bays go to the board, then the board will talk to John Viola and hopefully share with him our views. The two, the two uh, ideas that we've already run past them, I know they've, they've shared with Viola. This latest one, maybe not yet. I don't know if, if Doug passed that on or not. I hope he did. Sure. The, um, you know, maybe I know we're allowed to <clears throat> pursue grants with permission of the board. Right. And, and I think the cost of replacing trees, that would be another thing we could look into. That's one thing that <laughs> the Arbor Day oh, yeah. Foundation. I actually I lost a relative recently and you know, one of the options oh, is that as well. Yeah. yeah. And I, you plant a tree in yes. the yeah. instead of and they don't they don't tell you where but it's obviously Arbor Day it gets a lot of these, you know. Plant this tree. Plant a tree. So maybe we could apply <clears throat> to get a grant to replace the trees here. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It, um, I, I, I think they can't afford if they do something in Whitehorse Park. I think potentially they, you know, they have some money to just to actually start planting trees right now. I agree. Um, but for a more widespread program, um, uh, yeah, I think grants could help out with that. But I mean, you know, for one thing, uh, Sharon, if, if you could respond to Ken, Ken, send a complaint in on Ocean, o Ocean Pine uh, uh, info. contact info. Because <laughs> uh, I don't care. I don't think he cares. They, they know it's Ken Wolf. Uh, I mean, how anonymous do you need to be if you're just simply raising a concern about tree cutting? I don't mind lending my name to anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think if let's say you, you complained about um, a neighbor cutting your trees and then you contacted Ocean Pine Info <laughs> saying, how did they how were they allowed to cut all the tree? Now, would Ocean Pine <clears throat> talk to that homeowner and say, hey, so and so complained about you. Do Sometimes you think, I actually send someone out. Right. Yeah. Because they would. I don't them. think they, they would finger the complainer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like she told us or he told yeah. us. Yeah. No, they would. They would probably say, uh, "Well, there's We've, neighbors have been concerned about what's happening." Um, but th th they don't have to talk about the neighbors. They just need to go to the house and see if they are in violation right and if they are in violation then do something about it don't just say oh that's okay you can cut all your trees down or again part of my complaint is is that i think um cpi really writes off very widespread permits for tree cutting i think they've gone too far there is some control with the permit there is definitely the process does work. Uh, uh, maybe probably most of the time, but I think there's a significant percentage of the time where it's not working, where it's either too lax or whatever, because obviously we've all seen lots and of many just, trees getting cut down. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the issues may be that we've had, like since the pandemic, and there's a huge turnover of properties and influx of new residents. Right. And I don't know if I know when we bought our place, all we got was a copy of the, the HOA, you know, right. who reads many, many pages of that, you know. Is there some kind of like a welcome packet or something where people can know, hey, you know, this is... These I've are, never done anything like that. No. I don't, well, I just, my, I'm just saying that 
there, yeah, I think there's a lot of just ignorance because people don't know. Right. HOA, yeah. Before you get yeah, just the documents which yeah, are the realtor. Yeah, when you, and you do get those, but it doesn't. You know, it's nothing like you know, just things like a summary of like things that you should know about. You know. Just, yeah. Right. Well, well I remember back in the day, like in the was, first five years. Uh, or respectful yeah. enough, and she highlighted it. This was more significant. Right. Things. The shed size, tree cutting. Uh, paint colors. <laughs> um, yeah, but. I did. Yeah. Oh, your, your shed is supposed to match the color of your house. Right. That's. Yeah. No, no, no having fun with paint colors. <laughs> exactly. Paint your door a bright color. So, so well, then I guess our first right thing from the house is painted real yeah. bright color. Could be maybe go to act with some questions that. Ken has written down, and then we can follow up with the board after Act gets back to us. I can share that with Ken, and then also ask him to go back to maybe info at OceanPlines.org and share his concerns. Yeah. Uh, okay. How can we contact Act then? Yeah. We had well, who did we have? We had Billy, but he has left and gone to Maryland Coastal Base. Pat, Kenner, uh, do you have any contacts at Act? Now that Bill has left. I can check. It's, it's been a little while. I think Kim Check is still working with them, but I'll send her an email and yes. see if she's still associated. And then I can put you in contact with her or Tim in contact with her. OK, if you could copy both of us, if there is a contact at ACT that we could follow up with, maybe we can share some questions with them before we go to the board and John Latham will be on the board by then and he can help us. So after yeah. uh, is I'm sorry the acronym is that Atlantic Coastal uh, No Care? it's uh, Assateague Assateague. Coastal Assateague. Trust Assateague. for Assateague. ACT is Assateague Coastal Trust and then Maryland Coastal Bays like Out to him. He's usually very helpful and responsive, but he might be on vacation. So I'm yeah. on the brain activities uh, committee. We just had someone, and her name is escaping me from Massachusetts. Oh, Trust. from Massachusetts. Yeah, Trust. He sat down with us and talked a little bit because Maryland Crystal Bays talked to them quite frequently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can certainly help. Yes, yeah, so if that, yeah, that would be ideal. Right two weeks ago, we had. Um, if we could get some input, yeah, and start the ball, ball rolling. If Pat knows anybody and shares with Tim and Sharon, then we could see what we can find out from them, pick their brains. The more people that are on this, I think the more uh, response we might get before we take it to the board. Uh, yeah, if you could, I think, uh, like you said, respond back to Ken and ask him, please send in your... Uh, yeah, I'm um, going to give him a call. I don't think I'll put that in writing. Yeah. Some yeah. some some things yeah. are calls and some things are emails. I mean, I think we need if we can get more backup from the community, the the better off we'll be because okay. we do okay. it as a little environmental community. Yeah, and we've already been told and had our hands slapped yeah. that we're advisory in nature, that we have no authority, we have none. So yeah. you know when. That kind of takes the wind out of your sails. Well, you'll see in responses. Oh, when I would get, you know, when I get the home, I'll say now we should do this. everything. You know. <laughs> yes, and, yeah. We'll change the bylaws then. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we're on the trees, and we hope that they will listen once we get some responses, maybe from Act. We'll we'll hopefully hear from Pat as to a contact there, and we can. By September, I hope that we will be able to contact someone there and get some feedback. And I will also reach out to Ken. Can yes, go ahead. I have a question. Uh, Worcester County has quite a few organizations that are very involved in and in what type of work is done on all the Bay areas and the coastlines. And they even have pictures of trees and how to preserve, you know. I was just sort of surprised that the Worcester County doesn't have something to say here. Well, Worcester County is the ones we're kind of fighting right. because they are giving out the permits kind of willy-nilly. Right. It comes down to money for them. That's I will bottom line say that 
you know, I'm sorry to say that, but when we had our the few trees removed when we built our house, we paid a bond. And that went to the county. And if you don't plant trees or plants or bushes according to their, you know, their plan, then they keep that money and that's the way that they they work. Because I have a lot of their information and they don't make it sound like it's something that they don't want to be involved in. It seems like they want to be involved. The Worcester <laughs> County folks, yeah. Yeah, because it's the Worcester County Shoreline Commission, County Comprehensive Planning, Eastern Shore Resource Conservation and Development Council. Do we need a call? And they have all of the, the names and phone numbers and stuff. And, you know, you can see all the pictures. They have trees all over them. And even here, you're they're trying to explain to people why it's important to have the coast right. to the and, and what effect yeah, it has on the water and, and the uh, organisms that live in the water. So, all right. Well, that might be a uh, I, I maybe a next, yeah, that might be a, like a next year. Yes, 20 all oh, 2023. Look at that. Yeah, it all has trees on it. National Forest Service. National <laughs> Conservatory. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get their calendars every year. Yeah, I think they said we build a, a, a coalition or whatever you want to call it with uh, the people in the, in the county with those kinds of things to really strengthen the issue. Sure. Um, because then you got uh, you know the people are hearing it from more than just one. Area. Yeah, exactly. Like John has said here that he's said in a number of committees and. Trees seem to be an underlying theme, yeah. you know, and topic amongst us. Well, one of the things a lot of the people said when there was, you cut the trees down because the leaves fall into the water, pine needles fall into the water. But that's not the issue. That's the not the issue from what yeah. you're telling. I'm so, talking about what I was talking about, the polluted water, you know, or trying to clean up the canals. You know, that's a natural thing of, you know. Right. But we're just natural. talking about unnaturally removing all right. these trees. Oh, no, is that us? No. Oh, that's Sandy Smith. Okay. She's from Pennsylvania. Oh, I know Sandy. Yeah, we yeah. met her. She's trying to help me find out if we can get um, somebody to um, take a water sample of my canal. Oh, that would be interesting. That would yeah, be we could get somebody to make interesting. a water sample. That would be an interesting thing for them to do. They weren't, but I'd like to get them back to the see canals. in the canals. Yeah, because that's mm -hmm. where you, you see all the grass dumping and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where she's seeing it being thrown into the canal there. All right, well, let's. Um, I will contact Kent and we will wait for Pat. Possibly anyone else that might have a contact, John at ACT, to send us information and we can pounce on the trees and see if we could hopefully make a difference on the tree issue. Um, everyone that's here and those that are missing today, um, I will share with you the feedback yeah. that, that we get. It's um, sad, but something that we really need to deal with. We'll make a note of that feedback to me. Okay. So I can contact Ken this afternoon. That'll be my after my lunch, I'll take care of him. Okay. All right, well let's move on to the Green Street article on our new business. Um it's due September 15th and Patricia, maybe you can help us with that. Maybe we should talk about trees. I don't know. Well I mean Tim did an article early on, and I'm not sure if it was a, it was more about you know preserving the beauty and not just maybe necessarily environmental impact. I don't know. Uh, I it was a little bit. I mean, yeah. I, of course, repeating those issues is you know not a problem at all, but um, a little bit. I was mostly focused on the overall legacy of pines, and then I had like a couple sentences about uh, you know what you could do to. Uh, you know, not polluted, whatever. Uh, or, and then your your last article, you 
highlighted. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, things you could do. Yeah, yeah. But, and like, I went into a lot of detail. They didn't read it. Well, again, you know, I know it gets it gets pushed out on the um, by the Ocean Pines, you know, Facebook page. It gets, you know, and, uh, but again, those you you write an article and you know for September, and by the time people get it, it's like going to be the end. It's going to be October months. Yeah, it takes or no. I said I asked. Can we just get a digital version of the whole thing? And they said, <laughs> <Exactly>. no. <laughs> it's like, what? There's a little backwardness of technology in this organization. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you're taking notes because you can't get on the Wi Fi. Uh, you can take on my, the notes app on iPad. Oh, you can use. You know, okay. Not, and then, Separately. And then also, the if I have things and I use Google Drive, I can make them available offline. Okay. So, oh, so you're able to do that. Because mm -hmm. last month we asked about. Wi-Fi and here, and we don't have guest Wi-Fi. So. But we, but there is guest Wi-Fi. Oh, because that one too, John. <laughs> I'm trying to give you some information right now. I can't do anything right now. No, because yeah. There, you, oh, yeah, you can't access. There it. really yeah. shouldn't be. If meetings are being held in this building. They shouldn't have a Wi-Fi available for the meeting. I mean, there, you can set up a separate, you know, account and password. And we had guests in here give presentations before, and they don't have access to Wi-Fi. Well, either. we have it because that's we how have, we have it. It, we, it exists because that's how we're doing it. It does things. because we got Pat on, and we're having yeah. a Teams meeting. But that's not a guest. That's a ocean time. Right. Deal. That's what I'm saying, which means they could easily create a guest. <sighs> anyway, just another well, one of my issues. Yeah, my comment is, that I guess, you know, well, that's, I don't know that we're going to be able to address that issue but what, possibly a green street article on well, here's what i was thinking um we're coming to it'll be the last will that be the last issue of the year that's the last issue of the year so maybe a wrap up with some of the things the committee so initiatives that we've taken that maybe haven't you know I, i'm still not sure about the bee house was or whether it was ever installed no they never installed i asked tim and amy about it the other day and they said the, the you know again one or two Mothers. Mothers. Objective. Uh, objective. Oh, because no, because of the kids. Like the bees are not going to that is, That is a huge, huge pot. And it's so far away from yeah. You could put it way at the, you know, the south, or the, I guess it would be the east end of it. Uh, yeah, I just there. dropped it off our agenda that's because that's, I'm that's tired of talking about it. I mean, they, you know, we suggested that they get the mason bees. You did the research on that. Yes. And mason bees are kind and gentle bees. They're, they're not solitary bees. Bed. They don't. That's why that you have the little holes in these. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I could do an article about the importance of pollinators in general. And yeah. Kind of. You know. You don't see. You can't tell people they can't put. Or you tell people they can't put a bee house on their own property. Probably. You know, and you'll have somebody object. Um, but just you know, in general, you know, don't use pesticides. Uh, make you know grow native plants that are attractive to pollinators and um, the pollinators but you know, them so that with that them to survive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah include a couple sentences about trees too i will um, make sure i do that for you too if you could do that the I mean, deadline is so the flowering one trees flowering trees you well what i mean you're going to summarize if i summarize some of the things the issues we've been working on um, maybe i'll just set it out well, that's not our decision. John Lyell made the decision. But uh, well, we got we got the the uh, goose crossing signs up. We that's, I finished. and thank you, John. You know what? I honestly think that the video you sent us from Virginia was it Virginia or North Carolina? I, I had to watch it again. But the lady from HR, you sent us a video yeah. talking about how important it was. <laughs> I think Viola watched that. And he he proceeded with our goose and duck crossing signs that we got a lot of flack. So many people know that I was out there. Some saw me, and then this word spread. And sometimes they, get, they get back to you. Comments, and sometimes they get a little bit of digging. And yeah, 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 yeah. But people I think they're just kidding. Right here, don't they? Yeah. yeah. The only thing is that every once in a while, though, on some of the signs, the guys who cut the yard, they move them. They move them, and then I have to pull my car over. Oh, over and over. Over. I've done that the bank on the other side. Well, we moved that. Uh, I think Karen's son helped us with that okay. last month. They uh, moved the sign over. And yeah, I noticed the one on the um, median um, near the firehouse. That one's real close to, to the parkway right now. And, yeah. You know, I guess I, I can go and move it. Be yeah, we have to move them a little bit because I think you're By right. Yeah. That, yeah, that, I, I've moved. I put that back because the 
the guys that I see do it just the other day, they were cutting the yard on the tractors. Yes, when he cut, when he cut, he knocked the sign down but didn't put it back up. Yeah. So we moved that sign. Okay. Well, again, we and not to bring up a sore subject, we do need a plan for how do those get stored. In, in I know we do. Yeah. So that will be on uh, maybe next, next month. Yeah. No sin. There's not. There's nothing. No. They, that's not. I'll be honest with you. That's they're a headache sign. They are very without heavy. any sand in there. You can't put water in there because that will definitely freeze. Yeah. And if you put the sand in there, let me tell you something. That's, that's going to be, be too real. Heavy. I, I think they're heavy enough as it is, and they're you know, really yeah. if the wind blows them over, you have to just put them back up. We had one for church down on the boardwalk because we're selling raffle tickets down there. Let me tell you, my husband has to pick it up and put it in the booth. Oh, because you got the, the wind coming off the water. The other and problem we have they is they are heavy to store them. They are heavy. Well, there's probably right. a lot of storm in Public Works Warehouse, for sure. There's plenty they of room. Yes. But Eddie doesn't want to be involved in our signs. He didn't want to put them out. That's why John and well, but Eddie, Eddie needs to be told by his boss. John Viola needs to whip Eddie into shape. I think uh, Eddie is yeah, out the because, because, because they got a six they have a trail pickup. I know. Can, you know I would smack him six ways. They can days. go and drive around and just throw them right in the trail of the pickup truck and take them for the storage and then and store them. them. I know. It's just another thing to add to their fall I'm maintenance. Sure. Exactly. It's he a is, he short gets back through. I mean, he works to the pines. He yeah, but we need to... him on our side. We don't want to upset at him. We have to yeah. stroke him a little well, bit. I mean, clearly the signs are uh, actually a, a pretty serious thing because if you look at the kids, you know, you see the traffic out on these intersections and the keys crossing. They do. And yeah. all the cars there. Obviously, it's not a joke. It's a safety issue. It's a safety issue. So every I time I see the geese close to the sign, I go, Yay. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> they can read. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, right. so I will I'm wait for your article, you Patricia. Okay, so uh, I will talk about, even though we haven't gotten the um, they're they're really things are. up. They're but heavy. these are some, yes. some of the initiatives the, the real key that the committee has been working. To make sure that okay. Especially since you're the outdoor chairperson. Too. There's yes. a yeah. right. with it, which makes it nice and stable, and it will. It okay. will. The only time they come down when we're on the boardwalk is when it's really, really windy. And you get, yeah. like the wind of the boardwalk is like ten times what it is. Right. Here, so. And we've had some days where it's really, it's not to live, but we just pick them up again. All right. Yeah. So we can discuss that. Maybe we'll have Ann and Karen here as well. And they might have some thoughts as as to what we can do in I guess probably October with the signs. Mm -hmm. Storm. Yeah, to store them and maybe get Eddie and maybe John Viola to ask mm -hmm. Eddie. First we give them a big thank you for Yeah, thank you. Sure exactly. Thank you. I mean they're all sitting, they're all around the pond, right? Yes. It's like they're 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 out. They're not like spread out throughout the community. And they were expensive too, so we we want to take yeah, care of them. Someone could just they could just go grab them. I mean we just store the Salisbury boats. My husband has a pickup in the back of Salisbury. I mean, they were down Marina Wills, like a junkyard. They finally moved them out of there, moved them behind. Oh, you're talking uh, about the dredging things? No, no, the, the, the Salisbury sailboats that oh, down well, there and were on cap. Oh, the university. Them, okay. Yeah, they moved them behind the Mother Works building. That's where they sit today. And they're mm. just, they're just stored. Running away, there. yes. You would think that, you know, for eight, ten signs. It's and only and you just times. hold them up and put it right on top of each other. Figure Remember, that's how we carry them around. Picked them up. They were like yeah. leaning they against each other. The they really don't take up any room. What, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, it's, it's small compared to, you know, know, the pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. They're not protected or tarped or anything. So, yeah, I, I, I walk by there. They were all stacked up. Back. I think what happened during COVID, obviously, Salisbury wasn't using them. so. But no one was coming down to clean them up. Uh, they were just sitting next mm -hmm. to that bumper's right mm -hmm. and you know, grown and look like. How many are there? I got a match there. Were, the, what are they just like? A uh, little, little sailboats. The sailing team. I think it was a probably a great idea for us to work with this. I don't know all the background on yeah, it. I don't know. But they sat there that. and they would use, but they hadn't been using. The university doesn't want them. to just be years right Yeah, now, I or, think so. But they just turned it back. But huh. I, I was just saying, just just. 
they can store them. Why couldn't they store yeah, the signs? It's on? not a big deal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we well, won't. I won't talk about the storage of the signs. I'll just say that, <laughs> that, we, that the one of the committee initiatives, with the help of the Public Works Department, got yeah, our initiative is yeah. set well, up around. And then highlight that it's it actually uh, helps. Uh, you know, traffic or safety or whatever, it makes people aware so that we're and we're, 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 real. I'm, they know where to go. Where to go. Are, but I might I might have to pick the brain a little bit about the the uh, flight feathers and that's why that's why the geese are yes can't and fly they across. can't fly and people did not June. know that. Yeah they they start the um, end of May and and in June they are with their babies and don't have flight feathers. That's why you'll see their little bald butts. They'll have their little <laughs> white feathers and the little bald, yep, little bald geese. They molt. They're yep, right. they molt and they can't fly. And that's why people will see more goose dropping. And also the babies can't, can't and fly. And the babies yet. can't That's fly. why they're walking across. Okay, so when do they get them back? They get them back in July. They're they're fully flighted. Mm -hmm. And get their flight feathers yeah. in July. That, that helps. Yeah. It, I think it helps explain to people why you know. Why and that's a good road. that's a good thought because people don't know. Um, they don't. I didn't know. Yeah, people didn't know. They 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 said they're molting. They can't they fly. Read, yes, true. They have to read the article. No. That's the <laughs> problem. Patricia can only well, read the article. There are, has ever obviously people submit articles to local papers. Yes, letters. Joe Reynolds, if you ever read his stuff, and and, and other people, Joe much. <laughs> and <laughs> has there ever been, been an attempt to? Uh, I'm not saying they'll print it, but maybe one or two will print one of our articles. I've tried going through Stuart Dobson, and he only got back to me via email. He didn't put it in the paper, but it's worth a try. Huh. The editor of the dispatch is a really nice guy. Yeah. I have emailed him something. Yeah. Different article. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. But Jim has a point. We might be able to when if you want to, at least we're, our tip here is to communicate and educate. Uh, you know, we need to try to branch out. And I think the local papers, as far as I can tell, are popular. And people do read them. People yeah. do. We talk about the if career. we can get that yeah. printed. Yeah. Because well, they're dispatch. free and they're delivered. Yeah. Yeah. And I, every time I take the plastic bag, I go, plastic bag, plastic bag. I'll go, go into that in a little bit. Because yeah. yeah, I'm really right. wrapped up but in that. that, 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 that we read um, yeah. Again, uh, I'm sure I can volunteer my journalistic skills to the newspapers, but I don't know if that's going to get us in trouble with them. Um, yeah. About the only thing we could do there is, is possibly not maybe an article per se, but a letter to the editor. I've gotten right. those through before, right. like a, a nice okay. letter to the editor. They do have a word limit, but they can well, weigh that. Patricia, maybe you could do a um, abbreviated version of your article. As a letter to the editor, yeah. I, I would maybe preface it with um, anyone who's been paying attention to uh, what has happened climate-wise on our country in this last summer yeah. can't deny that there's something going on that it's, uh, you know, I know he's he's really nice. Which guy are we talking about? The he, he Steve Green is that his name? Is that the dispatch guy? I think the, oh, I the think dispatch the, editor. Well, it doesn't yeah. the dispatch also publish the Gazette? No, no, yeah, or they have some kind of a, yeah. okay. They they do the uh, Ocean yeah. City Today. Ocean City Today yeah. it's with Gazette, but not yeah. a dispatch. Yeah. Is a different. And I think Chip Bertino does Courier. Right. But he's really nice. I mean, I've emailed him about a couple of things, some of the articles. And and on the personal people, they have they, they know. And, uh, he's really very He's been responsive? Oh, yeah, okay. every time. Then Tim's right. We could maybe cover our bases as far as having not just a newsletter that goes out to Ocean Pines folks, but maybe it doesn't get to the editor. Read. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get read. Or, you know, I, I'm more, I don't know if you have, if you follow the Facebook page, but they do dribble the articles out kind of one by one. And again, are all the committees supposed to submit an article? Because I didn't see. No, no. Uh, we are called Green Street article, and it's just um, it's a, it's just a okay. environment and natural assets. That's what when we came on. Yeah, I think um, 
Yeah, a couple of the committees do it, not all of them. Okay. Um, I think Rec and Parks might do something. Uh, yeah, because I haven't. I, the last one I didn't see any other. I didn't committee. see anything from anyone except for us. Yeah. Right. Well, if it was one or two issues ago, I remember seeing um, like at least another article from from one, from of, one of the other committees. Yeah. Hmm. I have two in the past, but I didn't see in the last issue anything else. But again, I, I think that the whole thing could be. That's this is a, that's an issue of communications committee mm -hmm. revamped, yeah. Yeah. made more what's, relevant. Uh, what are you stopping at your department? Uh, no, there, you mean uh, no? We're just I'm just asking. My only point is if if we create any Green Street article that we also try to share it with our local papers and maybe they'll if it's in, a, a in another the format editor. yeah, yeah like another format, format. like letter to the editor uh maybe an abbreviated but none of the backup but that cover is people that don't live in ocean pines <laughs> maybe read it yeah, but it's not nice. printed it's only on the internet Oh, no, no, well, no. no. If it's a local paper, it's in the dispatch or courier or whatever. What are, you, are we talking about? Well, we, well, the report, the OP report. Yeah. It. They don't publish a digital version of it, but they do dribble out articles on the social media accounts. But again, I have seen some on Facebook. Uh, I guess your point is that they don't duplicate the uh, the whole uh, newsletter. Of course, you can go on the Ocean Pines website and see the newsletter electronically. Yes, but you can't. You can't get it distributed, delivered to you that way. Right. Just think how much it would save on postage and right. printing if they had that option. Again, for the communications committee. I'm, I'm sure uh, sooner or later they'll do that. Yeah, you think that would everything. be fairly easy, too, because of the Bayside Gazette. There's been times after midnight I've gone on to Bayside Gazette, have a digital version. and it's a digital version. You just download it real quick, and you flip through the pages, and you can read it. And we could do something like that. I mean, if Ocean Pines would do something like that, but they haven't. It would be a money saving. Yeah, I think so too. We spend thousands of dollars mailing these things. I, I don't. I mean, I don't get a print newspaper anymore. I do the digital version. First of all, because it costs a lot less. But you right, know, that's right. Really. You just get it. I love the Sunday paper. <laughs> well, I the like comics, the sports page. Awesome. <laughs> I like the local papers, uh, picking up the, the dispatch and whatever, yeah. and then sitting out on the porch and relaxing and reading it or whatever. Right. That's without it. Uh, you know, there, there's a new issue now with uh, screening exposure and what it does to your eyes. So um, <laughs> every Friday morning, my husband brushes to get them. Yeah. It was, exactly. it was hard for me to, to convince my husband that he, we could get a digital version of the Washington Post would be just fine. Oh, my neighbors still what he does. Delivered. But you can he he uh, clicks on the print version because that's how he likes to read. Oh, he it. likes to read. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's you're going to have that mixed. Uh, I think mixed media is still important, but um, anyway. but they could give people the option. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. get, you know, the yeah. September. OP when I lived in, in New October. Jersey, our local newspaper gave people the option. You can either get the print version or you can Well, it usually costs less if you'd go digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It did. We still paid for it, but it was right. a lot less money. Person, we could also ask, uh, can you, when you print it, put it on recycled paper? For this? It is on recycled uh, paper is. now. I noticed that they went from glossy to like a newsprint, oh, yeah. which. Oh, they have changed that. Yeah. Yeah. So must that's, be less that's expensive. A, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think it's a cost-saving measure. And I I often wonder if the whole, a lot of the reason for it is for ads. You know, because uh, it has yeah. a lot of ads in it. Well, it does. yeah, it might pay for itself. Yeah, it does have a lot of ads. Turtle Sanctuary. Um, has anyone given any thought to that with the ladies that have sent us um, their suggestions? Uh, do we want a sanctuary? Do we want a platform? I mean, not what we want, but what do we want to recommend to the board? I'm I would say what simple. you, well, we've talked a lot about how there are a lot of fallen trees. Yes. That they would just let one of those, you know, yeah. stay. We had a perfect tree and then they removed it when but they cut the trees over on 589. Well, if they go over to the oh, um, it? Ocean Park, the Route 90 pond, or whatever we're calling yeah, it, yeah. And, and, and takes care of some of the trees that are falling there, they can just move one, right. one big log over. Yeah, I, I mean, think we need to spend a lot of money yeah. or ask the board but to do that. That would be perfect, really. Yeah, because I've seen uh, the um, 
the turtle platforms that I've seen are in a lot of these um um what do you call them drainage you know yes right. stormwater management pond. management pond. yeah they're yeah. they're in the middle and then they end up being the geese platforms too so oh, it's like, no. it's, so we just have them move the tree over that seems to be the why well, not just use a dead tree and they got dead trees, trees right like here that idea. so as soon as they cut these trees they they got it toss one in the pond but if you put it in a truck and take it over to the pond it yeah. has to be you know somewhere where it's not gonna get get in the way of the you know the fit the people that fish i yeah. don't know what the best location should be but well we had one over on ocean parkway that was along with the trees that the turtles loved and that's the area that we the residents, the yeah, that's the as we do want the erosion fixed over there, and that's the area where people are walking mm -hmm. and saw the turtles. And then I started getting all these emails from the residents that live here talking about the turtles. And then they did some research and they sent me turtle sanctuaries that they actually have in Baltimore. Well, they're, yeah, they're just they're little artificial islands. It's similar really to the islands that we have in the North Pond with the plants on uh -huh, it, yeah. except they can crawl on it. That's what it put me in a mind of. It had plants and turtles, too. Yeah, I, have, I rarely see any turtles around the Southgate Pond now. Maybe it's because I have them all over there. Oh, oh he, he took a picture of you. Where do they, where yeah. do they hang out there? Uh, by the, uh, the Southgate Grill that... That, oh, that it was huge. That, yeah, and they and they're all over that place. Are you talking about that littler pond on the other side of uh, Franklin Creek, or yeah, the small one in front of that. Okay, oh, okay, center. I was talking about the big pond. I yeah, guess. no, I'm talking about the. This is the big pond. Well, also that pond too. You're saying so. You're that's not, not only the the little pond on the, next to Franklin uh, Creek, uh, other side, Jacko Southgate Grill, but also the big Southgate Pond. Yes. So yeah, there's got to be a couple of places near maybe where the the trail is forested. You know that the, the, the yeah, side there's some shade there. adjacent to either Manklin Creek or Cafe, and they could put it put a log in the water. Yeah, I hate well, to mention this. One of the things that happens with the little turtles is the snappers will get them if they can't get out of the water. Uh, that's a good point. I did read that online while I was researching this. Well, I've seen turtles uh, uh, play golf on. Uh, on Sunday and a couple of the ditches, drains the ditches turtles? with water, there was a turtle there that was squirming around. And it was a pretty Oh, that's a pretty yeah. significant turtle. And then the uh the drainage ditch next to Robin the Trail, which has water, I think most of the year, the bigger mm -hmm. ditch with drainage has water, there's a assortment of turtles in that. Okay. So well, they're there. Well, we, maybe we just need a platform. I, just well, not, I not guess, fancy. Yeah, well, or the problem, a dead tree. I like the idea better. That's tree. tree. Right. But, but, yeah. but, you know, the argument's going to be, uh, well, we don't want to make it messy looking. In other words, at the Northgate Pond, uh, they probably would argue, well, if you stick a log out there, that's going to make the pond unattractive. Right. They've uh, already complained about a possibility of habitat modification. So but. if you have a little uh, platform, well, that looks nice and that, yeah, that, that comes with an expense because they have to you put it in the center of the pond or something. It has to be anchored somehow. Yeah, so that's that, true. Yeah. And I think that those those uh, platforms that they put in the North Pond, each one of those was a, around a thousand dollars. I have to look at those. We built yeah, I mean, potentially yeah, you could get away with putting these logs in the Southgate Pond because it's it so big. big. Um, it's a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. When um, we get our new after this election like i say i'm kind of waiting for who's going to be elected and who's on our board and who gets appointed our liaison i will recommend to our new liaison hopefully they'll come to next month's meeting right. and we'll have a recommendation that could be like you know, first easy easy you know well, start easy dead trick see if that works then we'll try if that doesn't work we'll try maybe the platform but not the fancy one just the regular turtle platform they've had those in the south pond before those are not expensive what, what happened to the ones that were there they, well, i think the one that we had is still there if i'm not mistaken unless yeah. it blew away but no, it's, it's a, i remember that it's still there yeah because i drive by that that's yeah. okay yeah, and they and um, as far as I know, oh, no, but that's just, are there any in the Southgate now? I think there's one. Okay, 
There's one white, it's white. Okay. So, because we talked about putting one of those in the Route 90 pond and that kind of filtered away. Okay. Again, the, just put a log there. I know, just throw it on our and thank the turtles. <laughs> well, I know that, you know, right now you'll have little tiny baby turtles and then the bigger ones and the bigger ones and they're swimming all over the place and eating and then people are throwing crackers out to them oh crackers that's a bad idea i know well they they seem to like them and, and yes, they, they're and they hang the around crackers. there yeah. what can i tell you that's too bad because that'll that'll make the water really Okay. It, yeah, exactly. Bacteria growth. Yeah. They they banned that in one of the lakes in Baltimore because of the bacteria killed uh, I don't know hundreds of ducks. Yeah. Got yeah they. Well, I mean I don't. We have signs around the pond to not feed the geese. We have enough signs already. Don't, don't okay. feed anything. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the ducks and the geese them. alone. They still do it. Yeah, I see. They still do it. Yeah. If they would feed them. Corn and grapes and natural products, that'd be one thing, but the bread and the crackers are bad stuff. <laughs> Little kids do it. Little kids, I know, because mom, mom thinks ducks. that's cute and the kids like the Yeah, yeah, you know, I see them mostly, you know, the ducks will come out for, for food. For food, yeah. I've seen a lot of ducks. Right. Habitat modification. Um, I know that Pat Benner told us that she hasn't heard yet back from Kevin Smith. We're still waiting. So she hears from him, she's going to let us know. Um, I have forwarded to uh, Doug Parks the tributary estimate that I received yesterday. Huh. And Can I ask you what that number was? It was only 10,000, a little over $10,000 okay. for 137,000 feet. But that's just a shoreline. It's a, all it is is he's talking of a 30 foot buffer. 30 feet, he mentioned, and I said 10, but he said 30 feet would be better. And only two foot tall indigenous grasses, like something plants, not grasses, I didn't specifically say that. Uh, indigenous plants that grow in Maryland, that's what's been recommended by uh, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources as a strong deterrent against the geese nests and Burr Monroe agrees with that. And it was a little over 10,000. I thought that was reasonable to start, to start. Now that's, so that's not the entire shoreline? Well, he listed 137,000 square feet. So I'd have to go on Google Maps and see how many. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I mean, maybe you could ask him. Yeah. How much is that? Yeah, I'm going to ask is, him what, yeah, he, he may have already done that number yeah. a long time ago when he just reused it again. But Please. the problem is, uh, Pat, is that going to be, if that gets done, or is the, the, the fishermen going to be? Well, the fishermen will complain. We've had them in here before, but we were going to leave some walkways, um, pathways. Yeah, it does. Okay. Just right. go out a couple times. Right, right. We we talked about that when the anglers were in our meeting. They also have and those platforms they can fish on. They have several platforms, at least two platforms that they can fish off of. And I think that's what that was for, because I have cleared uh, bait containers from there before that they can't even pick those up and throw them in the trash. Yeah. Don't get me started. It brings me to tears the stuff they leave around that self pond when they fish so the animals to get stuck in them this estimate is from the gentleman that spoke yes he this does, is he does the stuff at the park right yes he okay. does the park uh tim sent us pictures yeah. of that yeah. i thought that's how those things looked really nice yeah, yeah. it looked nice yeah, yeah. It, it was very flowering well plants mixed in with being and nice. i think they pay him fifty thousand dollars a year to make yeah. them on those ponds right. several ponds i mean they got a lot of You'd be surprised how many pods they got. So he's well, you know, his uh, experience is, is well documented as far as the park is concerned. And and like you said, there are no geese here. That's what we need around our south pond as far as habitat modification. And then, you know, go from there. If, they'll, if, if John Viola would approve this, because I know Doug Parks needs to share it with John. John needs to talk to Eddie because I think his team would either do it or contract it out. I'm not sure. And then we have to get the money from what, Coastal Bay? Is that well, that's two separate things. The one we were talking about, money from Coastal Bay, 
was the erosion. Okay. And then we're talking separately $10,000 that I think we could cover for from Ocean Pines for, for okay. habitat. Yeah. yeah. To keep the geese from nesting would, would be a huge bonus for Ocean Pines. What about the other company that came and did a presentation? Did we ever hear from them? Yes. Were they He's the waiting. He is waiting. Here's what I've been told about that. Um, and I'm disappointed, but I understand it. They're taking bids. Okay. And when, when Maryland Coastal Bays comes through with the money, um, Solitude was the gentleman that mm -hmm. came in and spoke at our meeting. Mm -hmm. And we wanted him because we we like the socks product. Right. However, they're going to take other bids too from, from companies okay. to fix along the roadway. Well, yeah, you this have guy to, would be one of them. This you, one of you have to have fair competition, and and, and you know, of Three course, minutes. the issue is do they have good specific specifications and their uh, requests for those bids? Right, because he asked me about that yesterday. I mentioned him, and I, I I said to him that we were waiting for some money from there on coastal bays, probably in October. That's why you see it under unfinished business. I think that's when they give out their grants, actually. Across and the place. that's the when they give the money out. So that's what we're waiting for. Okay. Patiently waiting, but they are going to do bids. And uh, Burr Monroe knows Eddie and may have already been in contact with him to contact John to see if he could put his name in the hat uh, okay. to to bid. Because he has his... Uh, he doesn't... I don't think he used socks. He's talking about filter logs, which is actually a very basic erosion control uh, feature. So I, I, I don't know. We'll see what that means in there. Um, okay, so he talked about that when he gave his presentation? He, yeah, like one sentence. Okay, um, but at least you picked up. But filter that. logs is, is not the SOX technology. It's right. completely different. Um, but okay, I, I do have a question. You, you said uh, Kevin Smith, you're waiting on his communication. Who's Kevin, uh, Kevin, Kevin Smith? Smith is the director of Maryland Coastal Bay. Okay. Pat Benner uh, sent him an email okay. and she was waiting on Kevin to respond. Um, okay. as far I'm as over there today. I'll say, see if he's in now. Who is it? I'm going over there. Oh, today. you are going over there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to mention that we had a meeting and his name came up. Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice because we're assuming that maybe he's out of town or um, he's maybe he's back and he's just swamped with emails. It's possible. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to have his feedback. We're talking about um, the erosion and plants and habitat modification. Uh, we just want uh, indigenous plants so that we don't have to worry about anything invasive uh, taking over. Um, that we can recommend to the board and start there that they could have John Viola begin uh, plantings over there and hopefully keep the anglers happy as well when they fish. Does that answer your question? I hope. Uh, yeah, it, it does. I, I mean, I think this is all, all of this is worthwhile and important. Everything that you're talking about. It, it's my only concern is okay. Well, what about the other parties? And um, yeah, maybe we can create past infringement. But the only conflict I see is when they do the Teach a Kid Foundation. If you've ever been there, those kids are all over the place. Yeah. And um, and how they can uh, organize them to we be able to fish. That was the day before I had my stroke. <laughs> that was June 17th, yeah, I think yeah. it was. Maybe you were they, there. You were there. Uh, hopefully, many, they can modify how they, those kids fish. And how stuff. many kids like show up for that? Oh, they gosh, about show. 70. We had about oh, 70 lot of kids. Them. So you need a place for 70 kids to fish. And they're all all around the shoreline, in yeah. and out, and everywhere. That's true. And then the following month in July, they had the... Tournament uh, Art Henson Awards ceremony oh, okay. for fishing because they never explain who he is <laughs> and I don't know who he is, but it's a, a sure about that. fishing with the kids, yeah. in different age groups, and they give awards. It's a little tournament, okay. Yeah, and and it's catch and release. Sadly, the fish, you know, get their lips kind of chewed up with the 
with the hooks. I did talk to the anglers about that, and the hooks are not, they don't Barb. have barbs on them. They, yes, they have those circle hooks. I wasn't quite sure, thank you, uh, for what to call them. But uh, Pat Benner and me and Greg walked around the soft pond. It's been months ago, maybe even over a year ago, and we did find some some hooks in the water, easy to pick up and dispose of. So that kind of is aggravating. So I think the point is there's we're going to establish a relationship with uh, the, the fishing committee or whatever, the fishing club and the layoff yeah, right right there. So we're going to have, we're going to hopefully implement habitat and diversion controls and whatever. Right. When, but, it, but it's an it's an ongoing process. I it know, is. Yeah. With everybody. And when Karen was here, she explained that in detail um, to the anglers how we're going to make sure that the compromise is there as far as keeping the geese from nesting, habitat modification, because it's what is recommended by Maryland Coastal Bays and uh, Department of Natural Resources as well, you know, is modifying the habitat to keep the geese uh, afraid. They're literally afraid to walk into the water, make their nests and have their babies because they think there's predators around. We just haven't gotten there yet, but we're working on it. So we'll start with the estimate and see where that goes. John, did you have a comment? About that? About um, plastics? Yes, I do. Um, I have been. I am very involved with, with the Sierra Club right now. And uh, I'm in the process of writing an article and they're helping me. And Cindy Dillon is who I've been working with and she hurt, hurt her shoulder and and it's a, uh, but it's a really big uh, concern and it's the Eastern shores of the waste. And we've had, uh, we have another Sierra Club meeting coming up and they've done a huge presentation on plastic bags and here's a, like for all the different counties and, then, and they're talking about disposable ones, no bags and, and having bag fees so that people don't, you know, if they go to reusable right, bags reusable, right. and then they will show you when they try and clean them out, they have pictures of, of the machines and how the, the plastic bags really affect what's going on. And they have stores with plastic bags and not and how that's changing. But it's a, a I would say. It's a very big issue for, for them. And uh, and as I said, right now I'm working with them and I'm uh, we're going to uh, as the Sierra Club. Uh, there's uh, an article going to be published. Okay. And uh, and that's what that's what I'm working on. That's what I've been working on the last couple of days. Okay. Do you know where they're going to publish that article? Well, they're going to publish it. Well, the big concern right now is, do they publish it as Sierra Club? Yeah. The other thought was, have me put my name on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, wait. <laughs> um, I saw something on the news uh, this morning, local news about the, the county starting a ban on plastic bags. I know. Now, are we which county? Do we? Worcester. Thought, Worcester County. I thought so. We have nothing in place right now. Yeah. Yeah. But surrounding jurisdictions do. Surrounding, you're right. You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just I, I wasn't really paying 100% attention, but I'll look that up and see if that was. Well, you can see, you know, like all of these. There's the city of Baltimore, Prince George's, Frederick, Washington, oh, Southern Maryland. They're all getting very involved in it, all of them. And they have no bags, reusable bags, and disposable bags. And so it says lower eastern shore. Yeah, this is May. 2020. Yeah. All right. And how it's changing. And it's a, I think it's, so it's I guess it's an inter interesting, um, but that are the article. concern. Are they are get are they going to put it into a are you going to try to get it into a paper or something or? Well, it's going to come out. They're going to they're going to publish their own right now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, under Sierra Club. That's 
that's that's the discussion. Oh, the di okay. That's what the discussion is. So, but I'm working with them right now in, in, in writing. And also, turns out the EPA has also gotten very involved in it. And uh, they've sent me, the EPA is, I've got information from them. And uh, they're, they're help, helping me to come up with a, a story. I wonder how it's, because uh, Delaware banned plastic bags altogether. You, I'm wondering yeah, well, that's, how, what that's kind of here. impact they have that has had. I know it where my primary residence is in Montgomery County, they we've had like the tax, five cents per bag if you get plastic bags. I still still people people get them all the time. It doesn't so I mean I think the the best thing to do is to ban plastic altogether. Hi, yeah. right. I understand. Um, yeah, I know you said Delaware because I know if you go up to Harris, just Harris you know, just pick there. Yep. You yep. can't get plastic bags. Exactly. They only they only yeah. get Right. Yeah, paper, which is paper great bags. because at least they're degradable. But yeah, they're degradable, right. recyclable. recyclable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, right. Well, well also because you can have bags, you gotta. Where? You gotta, oh, oh. Well, well, yes. A lot of yeah, the discount stores, oh, you know, make you bring your own bags, or you pay for one there. Yeah. But they sell plastic bags, so that doesn't. Really but it's the heavy duty stuff. They they're reusable. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, the Sierra Club is is also really getting very very involved in this and uh this was the most uh, the most recent article and uh and so I, in in between them and and cindy villain is who i'm working with mm -hmm. we're in the process of, of writing a, and, getting an article out yes and you, as i said the epa is very involved in patricia i think a, a booth about plastic. Oh, that was about marital. So that's 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 me is like low, you know, way high up there on the concern list because those are the things that are made to use the little plastic pellets made to uh, what makes up plastic. This is what they start the raw material, yeah, and, really and they are escaping into the waterways. Nurdles are tiny little right. plastic pellets. I don't know how you find them. I mean, you go to the beach and, and use a sifter, I guess. And, and see what comes up but i mean to me that's like i want people to stop using you know sorry but single-use plastics are the uh, biggest problem yeah i am this is like the third yes. uh, life of this you thing can reuse them, yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah bags the, the bottles i mean how do you get rid of plastic you you get bottles are really supposed to be one of the worst really because the of heavy detergent bottles <clears throat> we buy our Detergent. We order it online. Detergent sheets, sheets, sheets. Bath sheets, and they have a little pod <laughs> that you can use. Um, we get the sheets, and they are terrific. Um, they really clean our clothes really well. And you don't have to worry about the plastic in them. Right, you're not. There's nothing. But if you head. think of all the things that come in plastic bottles, and you can't I look at the how heavy this would be interesting to see your article if you could share that with everybody after it's approved and you yeah. know we know where it's headed if it's going to be a sierra club article on plastics or if it's got your name on it it might be that's one of the discussions right now is it how how, that's how are they going to gonna, yeah. yeah label it and uh but you know when you get down to it it's not only just the plastic bag in the world, but it decomposes and, and the chemicals from the plastic bag end up in the water. And that affects the bacteria and that affects the fish and the crabs and everything else. So there's all kinds of, they have really spent some time. Okay. We had an algae bloom earlier this year because my husband was breaking it all out of the canal. And I was trying to explain to people what that does. You know, it dies off and it floats to the bottom. And I mean, if you walk in the canal, it's really slimy. Yeah, yeah that's true. It is very slimy. Um, because my husband lost his college ring. Oh, no. And he was in that time frame that oh, he found it. Oh, yeah. good. Oh. But it's so. Disgusting. The bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. rough. And it's a black muck that uh, basically sucks you out know, of the water. Right. And, and, right. Then you don't have the grass. We should, we should have the yeah. grass. Yes. Somebody, somebody said, you'll read it, that our, cow, our canals are healthy. I thought, who are you kidding? 
They're living in a lot. Well, all I have to do is somebody's going to, you know, somebody gets an infection and then, then you're going to hear about it. Yeah, then you'll hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that doesn't fish die off and it smells. Say, like, oh, where did that come from? Yeah, it's not. Do you eat the oysters that you farm, or are they? Oh, no, and you can't because they're they're all they're filtered feeders. So you're basically right. using them just to clean the water. Right, you turn them back in, and they're used to build to build the reefs. Yeah, the reefs. Yeah, yeah. or the new oyster beds. Yeah, right. Okay, but <clears throat> you know, it's amazing to me. That, excuse my voice, my MS voice. It's it's amazing to me the people that think that are are healthy. Well, first of all, when you have all these, um, you know, and gas powered engines that's spreading right off the bat. Yeah, that's true. Hey, we have the motors. I can yeah. probably a dozen motors have probably gone out by now. <laughs> Neither <laughs> one of them, you know, we sat right there. Well, it could be worse because now they're all four cycle motors now. Right? Yes, and that's whereas, what I was doing. For a long decade ago, it was two cycle and every exhaust would go right into the water. Yeah, that's, that's true. Really, we're that's a long true. way off from getting. Um, uh, battery powered boats. It takes a lot of battery. Well, like I, electric boats, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you would like to adjourn the meeting now. Pat, uh, thank you for joining us. You made our quorum today because we had several that Yay. didn't make it. <laughs> so, thank you very much for attending. My pleasure. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. If you need a motion, Kedra? Uh I don't know if we need a motion or not. Uh, we can do that. Motion to adjourn. Pat. Sure. Okay. And second. Okay, Karen. <laughs> I, I object.